Welcome to the Pharmacy Quality Solutions Quality Corner Show with your hosts, Jesse McCullough and Nick Dorch. We will talk quality of healthcare and explore what that actually means. Let's dig into performance measurements, the equip platform, and maybe de-stress and divert from the pharmacy conversation with occasional talk about nerdy passions and hobbies. Without further ado, here's Jesse and Nick. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pharmacy Quality Solutions Quality Corner Show. I'm your host, Jesse McCullough, and I would like to welcome back my co-host, Nick Dorich. Nick, how are you doing today? Jesse, I'm doing great. I'm uh, happy to be back and talking with you today. I'm also very pleased that we got a chance to have uh, Brittany introduced to the rest of the crowd here. So she's a great member of our team, uh, does a lot of great work with the pharmacy, so glad we could introduce her. But I'm also happy to be back, and I'm happy that I'm not traveling uh, out visiting and talking with pharmacies this week. Yeah, you know, uh, just to pick up on a couple of things there, Nick. One, it was great having uh, Brittany on, and I think that just uh, shows us that we should bring on some other members of the team uh, to the show as we go forward. Uh, but I also hear what you're saying, that uh, traveling uh, at different times of the year can be a little more adventurous. Um, you know, and, and to the to the listener, where we are recording this right now, we are just a couple of days before Thanksgiving, and uh, the weather started to turn a little more cold. Uh, in some parts of the country, have seen a little bit of snow, and uh, you know that's just the sort of the the, the, the time of the year. But uh, I would say this, Nick, as we get close to Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving has become my absolute favorite holiday. So Jesse, can you can you walk me through what are some of the reasons why Thanksgiving is your favorite holiday? And, and maybe I think this is a good opportunity uh, for us to talk about how that relates to you know what you think about uh, pharmacy and what you're thankful for with pharmacy. You know that's that's an interesting uh, perspective, Nick. I'll tell you that uh, uh, Thanksgiving was not always uh, my my favorite holiday. Uh, there was a time when my favorite day of the year was my birthday, and I've sort of. Uh, <laughs> outgrown that. Um, there was a time when uh, Christmas was my favorite time of year because and I, you'll probably notice just the the trend developing there. I just like to open presents. I was, uh, you know, a little more self, self-centered self at that point. But I'll tell you something that I've learned in, in recent years, uh, and I learned this from one of my mentors, and, 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 he, and he told me that it is not possible to be both thankful and experience anxiety at the same time. And uh, that sort of hit me. And, and, and what he did, my mentor encouraged me to take some time to be thankful and just think of those things that I'm thankful for. And by doing that, it can really cut the stress levels. And I think that's very, very important to do, especially as we get to this time of year. And, uh, you know, it just thing, it seems like things just really speed up. There's just a, a lot of hectic, you know, be here, do that uh, as, as the year winds down. So uh, uh, that's really a, a, a key thing to, uh, to, to, to look at. So, Jesse, I'm going to take the initiative here. And uh, normally when we've done this show, uh, you've been doing the play-by-play announcing, as it were, and I would do the color commentary. And for today's purpose, I, I really like this topic. And let's flip the script. And uh, I'm going to ask you some questions about that. We'll have you go into detail about the, the, the quality part of it and what you're thankful for. Um, one thing that comes to mind for me, if you haven't done so, uh, reached out to your, your mentor and thank them or just checked in with them. I definitely think that's worthwhile for you to, you to do. It's always important, I think, during this time of year with the holidays to reach out to the people that have helped us get to where we are in our career. Um, but let's go through and um, let's see if we can identify from your perspective what are you thankful for from a pharmacy quality uh, from a pharmacy quality perspective? All right. Well, I'll, I'll take you up on that offer, Nick, uh, and we will flip the tables here. And I, I would say, when when I think about being thankful in the in the pharmacy quality space, um, I would suggest that there's three things that that I would be thankful for, at least as I as as it is today, as we record this here, just a couple of days before. Uh, Thanksgiving. Um, the first thing that I would suggest that we should be thankful for is the actual performance measures. Now, I realize not everybody will be uh, in the same boat with me on that. Um, you know, I've sort of been uh, I've sort of been a nerd in the pharmacy performance measure space for uh, probably at least the last decade or more. Um, but uh, what I so like about that, and what I'm so thankful for uh, from that, from and especially from a professional perspective, is that what they do is they give us a framework to define and to de- to demonstrate the value that pharmacists and pharmacies provide to the healthcare community. 
And granted, over the last 10 years, I've seen some measures come and go. Uh, you know, there's been some measures that have been introduced in the marketplace. There's some that have been retired. Uh, and, you, you know, there's going to be new measures that come down the road. Uh, and they'll get better and better and better as we go forward. But I, I, I would start off with that. I, I think that one of the things that I'm thankful for, and I would encourage, you know, our listeners to just to take a moment and think about, is to be thankful for those measures just because of the framework that it gives us. Uh, to be able to represent ourselves and our profession a little more, uh, a, a little more objectively in the marketplace. So Jesse, with that in mind, and, and I had a, a presentation that I did with a local pharmacy group um, last weekend, there were some community pharmacists there, but mostly it was hospital or health system pharmacists. And it was really interesting to me because as I was talking about quality measures, you could see the community pharmacists kind of scratching their heads, taking a lot of notes. But the hospital pharmacist, it was more so from them an affirmation that, yes, quality measures are utilized and they are important to health care. So, uh, you know, with that in consideration, it's a little bit different, right? Hospital pharmacists, they're generally a little bit more integrated with a health care team. Community pharmacists um, are a little bit more isolated and siloed currently. So, I mean, to that effect, do you think that part of the measures does tie pharmacists and particularly community pharmacy to a larger health care environment and actually making them part of the health care team? Absolutely. I, I think what that does is it really helps bring pharmacists much more. I don't know that I would say that it brings us to, you know, front and center, but it definitely brings us closer to the bullseye with some of those different health initiatives that exist in the marketplace today. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, the, the other thing that I would comment on and the, the measures and whether or not you're performing well, whether or not you like the measures, um, there's still an aspect of it where you can be thankful. And I think back to, you know, Jess, you were talking about your favorite holidays being ones where usually they were getting presents. And, and I think back to when I was at, you know, maybe a teenager, right? And at Thanksgiving dinner, you're always going to talk about what you're thankful for. And I was always thankful for, for family. Um, but, you know, when you're during, during, I think this is a kind of an easy example. During my teenage years, I was always butting head with my, my parents. I didn't necessarily like them from time to time when I was getting into trouble, um, but I was still thankful for them. And I think to some degree, you know, quality measures, and there's a lot of things where you could be thankful for them, knowing that they can have improvements or that we can have a change in attitude at how these things are, are reviewed. But um, I think that's a great setup for what we have. And, and but that's a, a, a thing. What about um, people, what are you thankful for as as people? Well, I think I'll I'll, I'll go with the obvious here. So as we look at uh, qual pharmacy quality, and as we look at the performance measures, I think we should take time to be just thankful for those those. I will call them the good patients, right? Those patients that positively impact and influence uh, our different performance measures. So whether you're talking about uh, the adherence measures, whether you're talking about um, like the, some of the statin use measures, you know, just, just take a moment and think about that. Those patients who are taking their medicine as prescribed, those patients who are being treated uh, appropriately, you know, according to what we know today, um, that's really good for us. I mean, we should be thankful because that, that, that shows us that we have repeat customers coming back into our stores. It shows us that our, our, our customers are being treated appropriately and they are less likely uh, to have, uh, to have some, some different event that would take them out of our store, right? Uh, I, I, I look at these good customers as being, as being those folks that are, are really set up to continue to be our customer for a long time. And typically with those customers or the, those patients, and I think for a lot of our listeners, they're viewing it as the, the patient, but there's very much a divergence in healthcare today as to whether or not it's a patient, whether it's, or, or whether it's a patient or whether it's a consumer. I think it's a little bit of both myself, but um, for those patients that they're going to be not just picking up you know, their medications and not just utilizing the services for their pharmacy, but they're going to be talking with their friends, their family members. Hopefully they're bringing you other patients that are going to be similar, that are going to be uh, patients at your pharmacy for a long time um, and that you can really help them understand the value of their community pharmacist. So I certainly love that idea. I know for, for myself, having um, those patients that brought a smile to your face um, every time that they come in or if they come in just to see you um, at a, at a monthly or weekly basis that sometimes that those are really that those really help you get through some of the tough days as well but um, Jesse that's a great recognition there for those patients that uh, are the, the quote unquote good patients that does bring up a question for me um, what about those quote unquote bad patients 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be controversial here, Nick. Uh, I'm going to go so far as to say I think we need to be thankful for those patients as well. And, uh, you know, for the listeners here, uh, there, there might be somebody that maybe is a little shocked by that. I'm just going to ask you to hear me out on this uh, because, uh, Nick, you and I, we've done a number of podcasts now. One of the things uh, that we talk about is, you know, how do we improve, right? We, talk, we had a podcast that we talked about quality improvement. And I think we need to take a moment to just look at those patients, uh, whether you want to call them bad patients, that's probably not the right thing. And I, I will concede your point. That yeah, it, it, yeah they, for they, this they, purpose, we're talking about patients that that aren't adhering or they're not following a clinical guideline. Um, they're not meeting the intent of a measure, right? Correct. Correct. The, 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 these are those patients that when you log into equip, you can see them as the outlier, right? These, these are the patients that uh, are negatively impacting the score. And, uh, you know, I think we should be thankful for that group as well. And just the reasoning behind that is this, that those are the patients that point us in a direction on how we get better, right? So if we have a patient who, and I'll just pick on the adherence measures for, uh, for a moment here. If we have a patient that's non-adherent, uh, you know, by working with that patient, that helps us as pharmacists get better at solving problems, get better at identifying problems, uh, get, getting better at coming up with different solutions that may work for this patient. And as we deal with more of those patients, we just increase the, the, the value that we can add to the, to, to the patients that we serve in our store, or you know, even to be able to help uh, you know, if, 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 if you have uh, multiple stores or whatever, you know, it, it, it dramatically increases the reach and the impact that you can have. Um, you, you know, I would, I would say this, uh, at one point somebody said to me, people don't get tired of solving problems. People get tired of not being able to solve the same problem. And I would suggest to you that, um, for the most part, uh, especially around the adherence measures, you're not going to encounter the same problem. <laughs> you're, you're going to find different variations. Now they may seem similar, uh, but you're probably going to find some, uh, variations of that. You know, when we go to some of the other measures, if you look at the stat and use measures, or if we were to get in the way back machine at one point, uh, you know, you're looking at, uh, uh, you know, medications uh, and their riskiness. Um, what does that do? That, that points us in the direction of how do we better communicate with both patient and prescriber to, to, to get the patient to be on an appropriate therapy. Um, and, you know, those those are things that don't just happen automatically. Those are muscles that we have to use and exercise and, 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 and get better. So, you know, from my perspective, I think that that is a, a, a very special group of patients. And while it, it, you, you may be quick to, 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 to sort of be uh, uh, discouraged with them, I, I, I think they're a group that we should be absolutely thankful for because that, that, that gives us the opportunity uh, to improve our skills and, and, and therefore then be able to provide more value to the marketplace. Yeah, and, and I think um, with this, Jesse, and, and covering this topic, I think to why I originally wanted to be a pharmacist and when I talk with a lot of other pharmacists, what's the most common reason that we got into this profession? And it's to help people improve their health. That's the most common thing I've heard without, without a doubt and uh, there's, there's some other answers that go into it, but that's the one where that to me is the heart and soul of being a pharmacist. Um, yeah, knowing the medication is important, knowing the chemistry, the biochemistry, knowing the drug interaction, that's important. But ultimately, all that knowledge doesn't mean anything if we're not able to interact with the patient and help them improve their, their health outcomes. So while it's important that we help, help those patients achieve better health outcomes, um, I do also believe that it's very much a self-satisfying uh, component of being in the profession, knowing that we as pharmacists are helping people. Um, and that part of it, um, I know that I'm thankful for the many pharmacists that have been in, in my life and that have helped uh, me or have helped family members improve their health. And uh, it's definitely a great time to reflect upon that. And uh, I think, you know, for us, it's, you know, being thankful for uh, items like measures that can help move the profession forward. It's being thankful for the patients, but it's also being thankful for our other pharmacists, our other healthcare providers that have helped patients along the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Nick, um, I think I would say that this almost work in, in changing roles. Maybe this is a format we can try going forward. So um, with that all being said, I think uh, I'll, I'll try to steer us in for a landing here. Uh, so, um, Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have uh, enjoyed some of the uh, uh, 
thoughts and, and perspectives that Nick and I have shared with you today, uh, let me just make sure I take a moment to say that we are thankful for you, the listener. And uh, we, we, we thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, I want to encourage you to do a couple of things, though. Number one, I want to encourage you to share this podcast with two of your friends. Because if you share it with two of your friends and they share it with two of their friends, that's really going to help us get the word out about, uh, about what we're doing here on this podcast. I also want to encourage you to take a moment uh, to, uh, to think about the questions that you may have. Um, you know, pharmacy quality is uh, it, it's, it's a big space. It's a growing space. It's a place where it's very easy to, to come up with some questions and, and just scratch your head. So if you have any questions, I want to encourage you to submit those to us at info at pharmacyquality.com. Uh, again, the email address is info at pharmacyquality.com. That'll give us some topics that we can talk about in uh, future episodes. When Nick and I come together here, we do it so that we can share our perspectives and our insights on what's happening in the performance measure space. And we want to be able to help you become as effective as possible in how you take care of your patients. So until next time, we wish you well.